Good morning, everyone. It's good to be here again with you this morning. Um, a couple of years ago, I was asked to speak at a, a Durban Digital Day. And it was basically, uh, I was asked to talk about whether or not I believe newspapers are dying. And I said not. And then about two years later, we went through mass retrenchments across the newspaper industry. So clearly, I was wrong. So don't ask me to speak at your events, is what I'm saying. But at the start of this event, I was asked to write up a biography. Now, a biography is one or two sentences. Who are you? When the person introduces you, what, what should they say? And I spent probably more time trying to work out what my biography should say than what I'm actually going to say during, during this presentation. If any of you are, are still in the dating scene, um, your, your Tinder bio is likely to be one of the most important things you can choose. Your profile picture on social media is fundamentally important. Which picture am I going to put up to portray what I want people to see of me? And we build up these, these identities. Then about a year ago, we moved on to a, onto a new work system where we had to put in a work biography. I'm thinking, OK, now I've got to separate who I am as a person from who I am as in my job. And it's, it's this weird kind of thing. In these different areas of our lives, we build up these different identities of ourselves, these mini biographies that we have. And there's a really good show that started on BBC in, in the UK and is aired across the world now. It's called Who Do You Think You Are? And basically, it's an hour long of tracking people's identities and where they come from. And it starts out, and it's like, OK, cool, so-and-so was this one. And then there have been a couple over the last few years that have been really, really, um, really mind-blowing. And I'll just pull out three of them very quickly. The first one was a, a guy by the name of uh, um, a guy by the name of Larry Lamb. He's a UK actor. I, I didn't know him. Um, I recognized the face, but I didn't know who he was. And he went on Who Do You Think You Are? because his mom was adopted, and he wanted to find out. His mom really wanted to know her family history and, and find it from that side. And it takes him from the UK and across the world, and he ends up in America. And he ends up meeting his mom's biological brother. And the series ends with him flying the biological brother home and meeting his mom, who she didn't even know that she had a brother. And it was this big emotional thing and became all the newspapers and everything picked it up at the time. So that was kind of one of the big ones. Um, there, were, there was an actor by the name of Danny Dyer. Um, you might know Danny Dyer. He's, he styles himself as this, he styles himself as this um, London Cockney East End hard man. He speaks with a full-on Cockney accent. Um, on his Twitter, he, took his, he said one day he took his daughter with some bread to the park to go feed the ducks, and the, duck, the ducks didn't show up, so he swore at the ducks on Twitter. He's like that kind of, he styles himself with this hard man, and he's like a man of the people, and he comes from poverty. They, tra they tracked back, and it turns out that he is a direct descendant of King Edward III. It doesn't get more posh than literally being related to the King of England. Um, but then it turns out that if you go back 22 generations, most people in England are related to King, uh, to King Edward III, given how many children he had. So if you basically, if, if you were born in the UK, roughly any time in the last 20 generations, you are probably royalty. And it also means you've probably married a 20 times cousin. Um, that's just, you know, genetics are, are very, very weird. But the one that really tugged at most people's heartstrings was a, an actor by the name of Ainsley Harriet, um, actor and comedian, um, seemingly very, very nice guy. A, a, um, he's an actor who has stood up uh, particularly when it comes to, to um, racial abuse and racial discrimination in the UK. He's a, he's a black comedian who really has been at the forefront um, of, of these various movements. And he traces his history. And, and he's um, of West Indian descent. Um, and if you know anything about, about British and American history, a lot of your, your, your slave trade came through West Africa and through the, the West Indies. And um, he found out that his, his gran was a, was a slave. And, and he finds out all this kind of history. And then he tracks back to a guy by the name of Gordon Harriet, his great, great, great grandfather. And he's like, OK, here we go. It's going to be another story of another slave. My Turns out his great, great, great grandfather was white and a slave owner. And his whole world completely was, was turned upside down by, by kind of, he has a direct descendant who was actively involved in something that he's actively involved in fighting against. And it's amazing how we build our identities around our histories, around our past, around our families. And so many times that the, these kind of identities create personalities within us. And it's often why, why it's so hard to, to move away from 
some of the bad things in our past. Uh, I think Brian preached a lesson probably a couple of years ago now that has always stood with me, um, that the more and more we think about the things we don't want to do, we often end up doing those things because they are the things we think about. We think about all the negative stuff, so we end up doing the negative stuff instead of thinking of the positive implications of it. And it often happens like that with our, with our identities. We build our identities around our families. We build our identities around our friends. Uh, we build our identities around the schools we went to. There's a saying, how do you know someone went to Hilton? They'll tell you. Um, <laughs> the, there's the, the, there's the old boys and old girls clubs that come with schools. There's the alumni. I was invited recently to, to be on, the, on the, uh, our univer my old university's alumni committee thing. Um, uh, I'm part of their, their new, it's like we build our identities around these things. And sometimes it's worth asking ourselves, who do we think we are? And I came across a, a, a podcast, um, it's, it's pretty good, it's called the Daily Meditation Podcast, if you, if you are into, um, sort of, if you do like your, your listening to 12, 15 minutes, and it's, it's very, um, it's, it's not Church of Christ, but it is very kind of general and broad, there's very little intense theology in it, so I would recommend that it's, it's, it's quite a good one to listen to if you just want 12, 15 minutes of something relaxing and unwinding and they talk through it. And, and there was one that I listened to this week called Who Do You Think You Are? And it revolved around um, a really prominent verse in Galatians chapter 3 and verse 26, which says, so in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. And when you think about our identities, we think about all these things that we surround ourselves with, but how often do we identify with that first and foremost, that we are, through Jesus, children of God. When you're thinking about what your, bi what your biography should be or what two sentences you choose to put yourself forward to the world, that's where we should be starting. I'm a child of God. Then I am a cyclist who does things in the rain, I don't know. But that's where we should be starting with, I'm a child of God first. You know, if we base our identities on that, the rest of your life tends to fall in place. If you wake up every morning saying, I'm a child of God, your next decision becomes an easy one. And then your next decision becomes an easy one. Then your next decision becomes an easy one. So as we partake this morning, we need to realize that we are children of God through Jesus and through our faith and through his sacrifice. As we partake of these emblems this morning, let's focus on who we are through him. You know, on the cross and, and Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, he brings us salvation, but he also brought with us a relationship to his Father that we could not have had without him. Uh, just a reminder about the, the protocols before we give thanks for the bread and the fruit of the vine. There is um, bread and grape juice at the back and at the front, um, and then I think it would be better to kind of grab it and then get back to your seats before you take your masks down so we're not all kind of standing in the same area um, just to be as safe and Hopefully, hopefully soon we won't have to, um, but for now, if we can just kind of um, be as, as socially distanced as possible. Please pray with me as we give thanks. Lord and Heavenly Father, we thank you so much that we have this identity of being your children. We thank you so much that your son was willing to sacrifice himself on the cross for us, Father, so that we could have a relationship with you, that we could call you our Father, that the bridge between us could be built through him on the cross. Father, as we partake, we pray that you will give us strength, that you will remind us daily of who we are, that we can start our day knowing that we are your children through your Son, and that we can live our lives in a way that, in a way that, is, that is acceptable to you, Father, and in a way that allows us to, to build daily on each decision, Father, to get closer to you and to fulfill our purpose in you. We pray that you will bless us as we partake this morning. In your Son's mighty name, amen.